What's up, people? I just wanted to talk about a recent lawsuit in the music world involving Don Henley. First, I want to give you background on why I dislike Don Henley as a person. If you've watched my channel from the beginning, then you know I'm not too fond of Don Henley. I obviously don't know him personally, but every time I turn around, there's something new about why he's a douche. You have people in the industry that are just dickish about things. There's plenty of them. There's Kanye West just being overall crazy and also suing a restaurant for using the name of one of his albums as the name of their restaurant. If you want to see a lot of the other douchey things that he's done, go check out my video here that I did on him. Actually, I did two videos about some douchey things that he's done and said. There's Chris Brown being known to have a temper and beating girlfriends, or at least one of them in Rihanna. Everyone knows about R. Kelly and Elvis messing around with underage girls, and recently I found out that the Ant Word are a part of that group that have allegedly done bad things too, including different aspects of abuse and homophobic comments and sympathizing with a group of people that weren't too nice to another particular group of people after World War I. I mean, the list of people in the music industry, let alone any industry, is endless with people who have done questionable to downright mean, illegal, and reprehensible things. Some of you think that because there are bad people in the industry that I'm not supposed to talk about them. If that's the case, it whittles it down to a small group that can be used to celebrate music. I will talk about them, so too bad. If life is too much for you, then go lock yourself in a closet somewhere and don't come out, but you're not going to dictate what I talk about and don't talk about. One of the first videos I did on my channel three years ago was about a video that Rick Beato did on all artists and labels blocking videos that use their music on YouTube, with Don Henley going to court and complaining about people using his music. The guy has a team of people that scour YouTube to take down videos. I love Don Henley's music. I love his music with the Eagles and I love his solo work. My favorite song of his is probably Wasted Time. It's just a perfect ballad in my opinion. That makes my disillusionment with him over the years even worse. He just does a lot of schmucky things. I think the reason why I'm upset over him more than anyone else is because I do love his music. I grew up on the guy's music, so I guess I'm more invested because of that. The guy went to court to berate people for using his music on YouTube. He wants even more stringent copyright laws because fans want to use his music and praise it on a website where they're not even allowed to monetize it anyway. His ego is so big that it's actively trying to stop promotion of his music. If he had any shred of sense, then he would let people use his music on YouTube and just claim the video so he could get all the ad revenue. It would put more money in his pocket and people on YouTube would not only be able to use his work that they adore to teach or entertain and even bring in new fans for the Eagles and Don Henley by actually letting them hear his music, but he's a dinosaur stuck in his stubborn ways and wants to prove some idiotic point. The world is changing and he just ignores it. There would be no harm whatsoever to him by letting people use his music on him. It would only be a benefit. All right, so there's that. He also sued a hotel in Mexico with the name Hotel California. The thing is that the hotel was named that since 1950, 27 years before the song came out. The issue was that the new owners were alleged to use the name in marketing and merchandise in 2001 to advertise the hotel. They settled on this case. I mean, even if you think that that's justifiable, the band itself used an unauthorized picture of a hotel on the album cover to Hotel California. I guess Donnie Boy doesn't see the problem with that one though. He sued a foundation in America that protected Eagles because he thought that they were infringing on the band's name. This one got dropped because Henley was too busy to attend the trial. He actually donated $10,000 to this organization three years before he sued them. He sued a Dallas restaurant for having the name the Hotel California Bar and Grill. They didn't use his songs, likeness, or anything having to do with the song except the name. I mean, anything with the names Hotel and California ended up sure to catch the attention of Captain Lawsuit Don Henley. This case was dropped as well. I mean, this would be like Billy Joel suing someone for calling their bar the Piano Man Lounge. You would think Henley would be happy with the album Hotel California selling over 32 million units worldwide, but I guess his greed knows no bounds. Those cases were all on very slim reasoning, and that's why the last two would drop. He also threatened to sue Frank Ocean for performing his song American Wedding because it heavily sampled Hotel California. The thing is that Frank Ocean released the song for free on his introductory mixtape to the music industry called Nostalgia Ultra. The guy didn't even try to monetize it. Instead of signing a licensing agreement between the two parties, Henley still supposedly threatened to sue and called Frank Ocean a talentless prick. Henley likened it to vandals who go into a museum and paint a mustache on somebody else's painting, as if Henley's music isn't derivative of those that came before him. Henley even had the balls to call Kanye West arrogant. If that's not the pot calling the kettle black, I don't know what is. People that have worked with Henley and been around him have also said that he's a control freak and a narcissist. 
There were also accounts that when audience members started cheering at one of his concerts while starting a song, he stopped playing it and hushed them down to tell them they were being disrespectful. I don't know if that's true and it's just a rumor, but I can believe it. What has been accounted for is that he also doesn't like when fans stand during their concerts and he hates it when anyone uses their phone because it's free content for the internet, he says. He also said videoing a concert with the phone is a violation of our copyright. There we go again with Captain Copyright. Get off my lawn. I think I found someone worse than Gene Simmons when it comes to monetizing stuff. Now don't get me wrong, there are valid instances of copyright infringement and then there's just Henley being a tight ass. Taking video is a memory for fans. A way to show people that they were there in that moment for their favorite artist when it made them so happy to be in an audience to hear some music for a couple of hours. I highly doubt that they're gonna package and distribute CDs for $19.99. Lighten up, Don. He said he wants fans to experience the concert and not through a screen. Most people there will need to see it through the arena screen anyway because the price for the nosebleed section at your concerts is about $200 and they can hardly see you anyway. The only people buying $1,000 tickets where they can actually see you are companies buying packages for clients to impress them. It's not like he does anything interesting in concert anyway. There's nothing wrong with it, but he just stands there with a the guitar. What do they need to see? You scowling every second? Maybe you should just worry about performing instead of policing the audience. I know some people could be annoying at concerts, but I'm more inclined to just think that Henley is a dick at this point. Now, even if you might have some argument that those were all justifiable for some reason or another, the reason why I made this video is indefensible for Henley. But first, if that wasn't all enough, did you know that Don Henley also had a 16-year-old hooker at his house at a party where she overdosed on drugs in 1980? It's partially what his song Dirty Laundry is based on. I'm not going to get too deep into that, but you can read about that one on your own if you're interested. Now I want to get into the main reason why I did this video. Henley recently sued defendants by the name of Glenn Horowitz, Edward Kaczynski, and Rock and Roll Hall of Fame curator Craig Inciardi in a criminal case for allegedly stealing and trying to sell handwritten lyrics to the song Hotel California. Here they are being perp walked and in handcuffs at trial. The case was just dismissed halfway through the trial. I'm going to read the article from NME right now so you can understand why. First I'll read the article header. Judge says Don Henley manipulated prosecutors and dismisses case over Eagles Hotel California lyrics. A judge has dismissed a criminal case involving the handwritten lyrics to the Eagles Hotel California after concluding that Don Henley had manipulated prosecutors by withholding evidence. Glenn Horowitz, Edward Kaczynski, and Rock and Roll Hall of Fame curator Craig Enciardi were accused of attempting to sell handwritten notes and lyrics from the classic 1977 single, as well as its follow-up, Life in the Fast Lane, back in 2022. Officials estimated at the time that the documents were worth over $1 million in total. The defendants maintained that they had legally obtained the lyric sheets from author Ed Sanders, who was hired to write a biography for the Eagles in the late 70s. Sanders sold the notepad to Horowitz, a rare book dealer, for $50,000 back in 2005. Henley claimed that he never gave Sanders the lyrics, and the latter was not charged in the case. Defense lawyers suggested otherwise, however, and questioned Henley's version of events. During a hearing in New York yesterday, Wednesday, March 6th, Judge Curtis Farber confirmed that Henley had recently handed over more than 6,000 pages of emails and other notes that lent credence to the defense's claims that Sanders had legitimately come into possession of the lyrics via Consequence magazine. The materials were previously withheld under attorney-client privilege, which Henley is said to have waived last week after he and other prosecution witnesses had already testified. Farber told the court, it is now clear that Henley and longtime Eagles manager Irving Azoff and their lawyers used the privilege to obfuscate and hide information that they believe would be damaging to their position that the lyric sheets were stolen. Albeit late, I commend the prosecution for refusing to allow itself or the courts to be further manipulated for the benefit of anyone's personal gain. District Attorney Bragg and the prosecutorial team here, while eating a slice of humble pie, are displaying the highest level of integrity and in moving to dismiss the charges. I am impressed. Henley's attorney, Dan Precioselli, subsequently issued a statement to the Associated Press claiming that his client had once again been victimized by the unjust outcome. Petroselli added that the musician would pursue all his rights in the civil courts. Horowitz, Inciardi, and memorabilia seller Kaczynski were accused of attempting to sell the lyrics to various auction houses after purchasing them from Sanders, as well as trying to coerce Henley into buying them back. The three men each pleaded not guilty to conspiracy and various other charges. Their lawyers previously claimed that the case alleged criminality where none exists and unfairly tarnishes the reputations of well-respected professionals. 
So not only did Henley criminally accuse the people that bought the handwritten lyrics from Sanders of theft, but Sanders wasn't even sued. Henley sued the other guys that were making a legitimate purchase from Sanders. On top of that, Henley withheld evidence that suggested that the defendants were innocent. How much of a scumbag can you be, Don Henley? What was he trying to do here? What was he trying to prove? Is the extra possible million dollars he might have gotten here worth imprisoning three innocent people? I mean, how low can Don Henley go? It came down to the prosecution team having a look at the withheld evidence and having the integrity to make the decision to drop the case. And then Henley's attorney is still saying that Henley is the victim here and that they're going to take the case to civil court. This is insanity. Henley even accused him of trying to coerce him to buy the handwritten notes back. How can anyone believe anything that Don Henley says after this? I'm willing to bet that any civil cases that he might go through with are going to get dropped. I've never been this harsh when talking about Don Henley before because it's mostly just been dickish personality traits with him. But this goes over the top trying to get those defendants in trouble criminally and knowing that they didn't do anything wrong. Oh yeah, and did I mention that he had a 16-year-old hooker that overdosed at one of his parties? Alright, so I just wanted to rant about this. I just think that this case is crazy. And then they have the nerve to say Don Henley is still the victim here. Wow. Just wow. For someone like Don Henley to act holier than thou and think that he has any moral high ground on anything is laughable. Alright, so let me know what you think about all this and I'll end it on this very well-deserved opinion. You, sir, Don Henley, are a piece of shit.